Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> Get ready to be at our best, man. Be at our best. Yeah, it's gonna be a boring one today. Those guys don't all suck. You son of a B. ASAP, any squad, any place, you know we bring well. We bow down, we'll pull up on anybody and get it done. Suck it, Raiders. He is dead. I love you, Jeff. Bye. Joe, go fast. They're the next team on our schedule, and we're trying to do something big here. We're trying to win a Super Bowl. Another beautiful day. It is. Welcome back, everybody, to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Bulldog, still locked down with my two lockdown buddies, Kev Huggin' Duggan. Hi. And Kyle, the coach, Duggan. What's up? Oh, boy, folks, we've got... It's crazy to me how new news still comes out. I keep expecting there to be a lull between now and the draft, and there's just there's just still more stuff to talk about. It's crazy, so... Uh, we've got lots to talk about, and most importantly, uh, what we've been doing. Uh, have we resorted to making marks on the wall to count the days? Are we growing out beards? Are we peeing in jars and collecting them on the windowsill? What are we doing? Because we're all locked down right now. Kev, what are you doing? What are you uh, doing? I'm growing a beard. What are you doing? You I'm are growing a beard. Growing a beard. I haven't done it. I've never had enough time to like be hidden enough to actually go uh, on yeah, decent. the time that's i do i'll is. try but then i'll go to work <laughs> i'll go to a shoot and i have like the crappiest looking crappy beard this is the longest i've ever been in, and it's coming in pretty nice so i'm pretty pumped it on is it. Um, i like it besides that had a little health scare not too few days ago um had some symptoms in the morning we're like oh god did we know what you Ooh, know what were those symptoms kevin it was just i felt like complete shit i was just off i was Ooh. awful sweating you had a fever cold. yeah my throat hurt it was all the stuff that oh. the news has been telling us so oh, god gave me a chill went and got the 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 test um and then we found out that i had strep so i had strep for a day which was like i've never been so happy to hear that i had strep throat because it meant it wasn't the other thing so thank god for that but it's this, been a, this, we're referring we're like talking about the coronavirus or covid19 like it's like voldemort like we don't want to say the name don't say his name don't, <laughs> don't say his name how he dare must you not be named yeah you're glad you that. didn't have it i was called voldemort from now on that's better <laughs> covid19 Voldy. is voldemort voldemort so voldemort didn't get a hold of me um thank so god so still doing good no but dark yeah, marks on you nothing yet yeah. um, no so death eater over there still <laughs> just staying in my house i'm it's good it's getting to the point where I'm kind of getting comfortable here. <laughs> like I, I've oh, got a routine now oh, and I'm no. not like super pissed. Like we go on walks, we still go outside. We just don't have any human interaction, which is the only crappy thing. That's why I look forward to doing this with you boys. So Heck that's yeah. pretty much what's going on with me. What about you? Uh, Will dog? Uh, well, just, uh, staying busy, uh, working on uh, little projects here and there. Hopefully you have something to show next week, uh, for those who enjoy a little, audio experience i'm working on a little something something it's not really charger related but you know it's, uh, it's gonna be fun um <laughs> and just keeping an eye on the news man like i say it's just crazy all the all the stuff that just keeps coming out that uh still making moves it's crazy to me uh but i think by the end of this we're all gonna come out with hair down to our ankles and we're gonna be nice and round and where's yours I think it's going to be from? Yeah, it's going to be like uh, the end of Wally. I think we're all going to come out of the spaceship. We're going to be these round, tubby things, and we're yeah. going to start to go back and till the earth and everything like that. So nice. We'll see. And Kai, you're still holding up okay? <laughs> There's no uh, holes in walls or um, children missing any teeth? Kids got their teeth. Um, there may be a couple <laughs> holes in the wall, but from my fist out of frustration. Oh, dear. No, everything's good. Um, yeah, it's like weird that this has become normal. Normal life is co uh, he who must not be named avoidance. It's like, we're just shut up. Like we're just, you're just, I kind of just used to it now. Um, yeah. Trolls two world tour came out. So that was a big highlight to my not, life not, on Friday. Not really what I was hoping for though. Right. Are you, are you Ooh. with me? Oh, it, was, it was, it was good. Like there's, I don't know. It had some, it, they did not drop enough money on licensing of good music. It's a movie about okay. all the different musical genres. And the, the featured song for the rock genre is Barracuda. Are you uh, kidding me? No. But then it, it, it's a movie for kids, Kevin. It, like, I know. It's gonna, I'm an adult male complaining and... about Trolls World Tour, but it's all I have, <laughs> what, all what, I have right what, now, Kyle. What, if you, okay, if you wrote that story, if you wrote that movie for adults, what would the theme, like that go-to rocks theme song be? be? 
definitely Metallica, dude. Right. Any, exactly. Anything. You can't put that on for the kids. You could have easily put that on there. <laughs> You have a you have some girl singing it in a version. It's, it, dude, yeah. Enter Sandman. Give me a fucking break. That'd be amazing. <laughs> okay, that's kind of shit. That would be pretty. It dope. was good for the kids. They loved it. I was have sitting to go there into the stewing. Song. You just play the intro. Yeah, yeah, dude. So yeah, it was it was. I don't know. It was good. It it gave us something to do for a couple hours. So that was a win. I saw um, such a little bitch complaining about but, Trolls World Tour. <laughs> yeah. I know, okay. I just pulled a 73 on Rotten Tomatoes. Cool your Cut jets. this out. That's a C, yeah. dude. That's average at best. <laughs> it's I, um, fresh. <laughs> honestly, just still dying for sports. I mean, like, yeah. I yeah. can't tell you how pumped I am for Sunday night. They're having, like, a horse basketball competition. What? <laughs> I am just jazz to say the least <laughs> just to watch some kind of competition that's not me versus paxton where i have to let him win everything or else it's a, a nightmare so yeah i'm excited <laughs> to see some competition i could just see i could just see your son getting so pissed off if you like really went at him hard once and beat oh, him i can live it dude it's got the yeah competitive we play streak. we play soccer in the living room and if i ever score it is not good it's he a needs, meltdown. he's like the world, he's like a world-class goalie. He, if he doesn't stop something, it's, it's game over. But well, yeah, he's got, he's, he's got, basically some, he's me. He's got some professional pedigree. One of his grandpas was like an MLB or right? Not like, yeah. 12 like years a, in the league. Like a major yeah. baseball player. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, he's a Yankee. Yeah. yeah he's, so, that was it. Uh, me. Yeah. Yeah. Silver yeah. slugger. All-star. Yeah. That was his, one of his grandpas. His other grandpa's not too shabby in the <laughs> basketball court either. Yeah. So yeah, he's got a lot of living up. He's got a lot of sports. So he's got the competitive fire. Um, so we just got to harness it a little bit. Of games. <laughs> yeah. control Rage it. cage. Uh, let's see. There's been, uh, we'll start with uh, the league. We won't uh, delve right into the chargers yet. We'll just kind of touch a little bit about what's been going on. I think the biggest thing in regards to the league itself is the entire draft is going to be online, which Ah, boy, I don't know. I mean, these guys run two billion dollar franchises. I don't know if they can handle a computer with Zoom and a webcam. I think there's going to be some network failures. I don't know about you guys. There might be some auto drafts. You, you've all played fan. You've all played fantasy football. Just like yes. I know, my dad plays fantasy football and oh cannot my, figure it, out it, the software, dude. And always all, is, auto picks. Yeah, that's the first thing I thought of. I was like, this is dad. He's going to be sitting there strategizing who to pick. He's going to wait till the last second. It's going to glitch out and he's going to draft some like some like some kicker, kick, in, the kicker first in the first round. Yeah, yeah, something ridiculous. And that's going to happen. And it's going to be like the Dolphins and they're going to file a complaint and it's just going to they're going to be suck still. Forever. I just hope that doesn't happen. But it, uh, the just not to the Chargers, there. at least it's yeah. potentials there. Hopefully it happens to like the. Um, lions or the dolphins right before our pick, and a certain someone who must not be named slides to us. Mm. Have you guys heard of uh, Zoom bombers? Have you heard of this phrase? Like people no. jumping yes. in on Zoom meetings and yeah. like, yeah, doing crazy they shit. They throw yeah. So like my and my job now. That's what we use for meetings. Um, and I work at a church, so it's like they they we send out this whole like staff wide email of like guys got to be careful, make sure you have passwords. Because people will jump on there and throw like crazy inappropriate images and videos because they're like take over the screen. So it's like, yeah, oh. like they they're like finding how to like hack Zoom basically. Cause Zoom wasn't hmm. ready. I thought that maybe Zoom created COVID nineteen because all of a sudden <laughs> everyone in the world is using Zoom now. Oh, and yeah. I don't wow. think they were prepared for this, like um, from a security standpoint. So yeah, like there's like people out there legitimately like, hacking Zoom conferences and wow. stuff. Wow. So there's there's some teams that are worried that like their confidential talk and what they're like discussing is going to get leaked somehow. Sure. I heard that the NFL is not doing any none of the teams are allowed to do it on Zoom. It all has to be oh, on really? Microsoft or something else that has better um, security, security, which was kind of mm. crazy. But that's right. the stupid wow. stuff you have to look into now. Like, yeah, you've never done this before. Like, I'm curious what that broadcast is going to look like. I was just going to say, I, I'm curious how they're, I mean, because it's been such a huge hyped up event for all the years prior and, or at least most recently. So for something that's going to be as low key as an entire online draft, like yeah. what are they going to do to hype it up? Like, is the bald guy from Magic Mountain going to come like dancing in like, <laughs> you know, like. What it. are they going to do that's going to keep it entertaining? I mean, I'm fine for it being low key. Yeah. yeah. 
but I don't know that they are. I yeah. think, you know what dude, I mean? th- that's the thing though, is like we're in such a sports starved country right now. Anything they give, we're gonna soak, <laughs> we're just gonna be uh, uh, just it's drinking gonna be it like all little, in. Yeah, little fireworks. <laughs> just, uh, and who drafted who in the seventh round? I wanna know. Dancing babies from yeah. Allie McBeal, like oh, just yeah. these little animated gifts going across the screen. Oh, it's god, be stupid. But I'm excited because I don't know what it's a brand new show no one's ever done. So I'm gonna right. I can't right. wait to tune in on yeah. that. Honestly, if they put it in the hands of the guys that are running Chargers social media team, that might actually be a really so cool funny. broadcast. There'd be some Sponge, SpongeBob references. Oh my God. So be the so memes good. would be crazy. Yeah. You can say one thing about the Chargers, though. One thing without a doubt is that we have the best social media team without a doubt. Exactly. Hands down. Oh, yeah. win. they're so Easily. good. Yeah. So, and so, in, in touching on that, uh, those of you that are keeping tabs on what's going on in the league, there's been some uh, new uniforms that have come out. Uh, Tampa Bay has revealed theirs. Atlanta has revealed theirs. Uh, they kind of look the same to me. Um, yeah, I wasn't yeah, super. Tampa, how'd you guys <laughs> look Tampa like Bay same just color went, schemes. Yeah, Tampa Bay went back to their old stuff. Like they realized, right. oh, we effed up. Like we need to go back to our normal those digital stuff. looking numbers were so weird, and now they're normal yeah, numbers weird. again. So yeah, right, they, so they, they just to reverted normal. back to what was good. And right. then Atlanta, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, I don't know. It's just just not, in case you forget kind of where you're playing, you can look at your chest and go, oh, yeah, I work. I play for Atlanta. ATL. I <laughs> ATL. Or I play yeah. for ATL, yeah. I yeah. play for ATL. Yeah. The, so, uh, that show the on airport ne- ATL. Netflix or whatever. Like, that's just all. It's just like a walking <laughs> billboard for that ATL show. Yeah. <laughs> and we've seen uh, from the Chargers social media, they've been uh, showing some of the players our new uniforms, and they've been getting pretty hyped about it. And, boy, I hope it's real hype, man. I hope it's not just like... That kind of oh man, that looks really cool, and then you look at it and you're like, oh man, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Joey, you let me down, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joey, you liar, <laughs> you liar. He looks I don't think that's gonna be the pumped, case though. though. He looks super pumped. Like he I doesn't usually give a lot case. of emotion, and yeah. his reaction video, like he like did a double take. He like had to get closer. So I wonder right. what that means. If there's like a lot it of detail genuine. in the uniform, or if it's like. <laughs> just simple and the colors are really cool like i don't know like i'm like i'm so excited for this y- uniform so, reveal of, i'm gonna get my new jersey right after so okay so here's my thing of all the team the players on the chargers who have great style why are you gonna show it to joey bosa i mean like i love the guy he's a great football player but when yeah. it comes to like being swag on the football field he's not leading the team you know like I want to hear what like Melvin Ingram has to say about it <laughs> sure. or like, like uh, Derwin James or like somebody that like, I don't know, like ty- even Tyrod, like throw- Tyrod dresses extremely well. Like throw Tyrod right. on there and see like, what are these? Like Joey Bosa's like, Oh, cool. I love right. it. <laughs> don't talk <laughs> shit about Joey Bosa. You stop <laughs> it right now. <laughs> I love Joey, but like I'm actually obsessed with you Joey. You just kind of called him a dumb dumb, <laughs> kind of right there. But no, no, just when it no, comes he's not to a like, dumb dumb, just not a fashionista like some of the other guys like, on our yeah, team. Yeah, I can imagine him showing up in like jeans and a t-shirt to the games. You know, like right, it's yeah. not like he's not. I don't know. It's just I would have liked to see someone else have, but it was kind of funny to see Joey because even then him, he had a he knife like at the end. He, his mafia roots are still very yeah. firmly in pace. He just walks around with a knife yeah. all the time. Yeah, he's yeah. like, hey, be safe out there. Be safe out there. Knife. I'll cut you. Yeah. <laughs> if I it looked like outside, he was not I'm afraid coming. to stab somebody. I saw somebody online that broke down that video and slowed it down, and it looked like he was showing everybody the, um, oh, no the uniform in the, like in the reflection of the knife. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. You, There's a, something on Twitter that showed that. I was like, maybe he's a genius. Maybe he's like sending like an SOS. Enhance. Like enhance. <laughs> an SOS. Yeah, enhance. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've still got some time. Uh, Charger uniform is going to be revealed just before the draft. So we've got some exciting days coming up here that week. Uh, 21st is when we should see that. And uh, let's see, in regards to the league, uh, you know, I we'll talk about this. Dan Fouts. Uh, did not get his contract renewed with CBS. Now, for some people, they were singing praises, shooting off uh, fireworks. Thank God he's no longer there. And I get that. Like, for some people, they get really touchy about somebody like Dan Fouts commenting on a game and kind of crapping on the team that he came from. I never really saw it as 
crapping on the team. I don't know. Some people get really passionate about the announcers and what they're saying. And at the same time, like for me, like I'm just watching announcers. They got to like fill time. They can't just be like, he hikes the ball, he throws it, he caught it. And then just sit in silence for 10 to 15 seconds and not say anything until the next play gets called. So they've got to fill time. And maybe he just wasn't the best at it. I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on on Dan not coming back next year? I'm not super... I'm good with him coming or not coming. Like he, he, the thing That's is, what she said. It felt like he tips. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. <laughs> Michael Scott. Um, he, he feel like he, because he was a charger for so long, he, um, <laughs> oh, God. Good, good morning, but good I digress. Morning and good night. Yes. Um, but it just felt like he tipped always way too hard. To like he was like that, that dad that like just, just kind of told you when you did everything wrong. Gotcha. Like just because he was a charger, like he was just always kind of like extra critical of us in times where I'm like, we, we're already critical of ourselves we, and everyone else in the <laughs> nation doesn't like us pretty much. Like, why do you got to go extra on us, Mr. Fouts? Like, sure. I have him, I have a signed, you know, poster of him up on in my office. Like, I love the guy. He was one of the best chargers of all time, but legend. Yeah. You know, him announcing, I'm, it sucks he doesn't have a job, but like him not calling charger games, it doesn't really bother me. Cause I, I, no. I found myself getting frustrated with some of the things he said occasionally. I agree. I mean, I didn't love him to, just to be honest. Like, as a player, yeah, as a charger, he was like a legend, but I just, I, I don't know. He, like Kevin said, he's just kind of critical of the team. It seemed like every step. And I don't know if he felt like he had to do that because he played for the Chargers. He was trying to be like professional and not biased. Uh, it just came, it, it felt like he went the other way a little hard. Um, gotcha. From the broad, like from CBS's standpoint, I don't know what he did wrong. Like from their standpoint, I thought he he had good insight and whatever. Like if you're just a neutral, like uh, maybe LA was like, no, we got to get these. We need them to talk better about LA. I don't hmm. like. I don't know, but um, that could be. I could see I'm not that. like. I'm not like. Oh crap! I love right. listening to Dan. You're not every Sunday. A candle for him. <laughs> I didn't wake up no. and start crying when I read the news. I was put it that right, right. right. I want Chris Collinsworth to lose his job. That's what I really want. Yeah, Chris Collinsworth, that guy is a, Joe Buck. Such a these pain. are the two that we don't want anymore. We just needed. We just needed. We just needed to have a whole bunch of Tony Romos just talking to each other. Oh, because that would be yeah, so Tony, fun. Tony Romo call every game. He sit at his home. He has like picture in picture of all the games going on, <laughs> and he'll just talk about him as he wants. And like as he's talking about your game, he pops in. Right. I love it. That's I think a, it's a really great good idea. idea. I should send that over. Send that idea over. <laughs> yeah. What's yes. Tony's, uh, what's his Twitter? We're going to DM to make. Do it. Uh, let's see. A uh, workout video was leaked for Mr. Tua, Tug of Iola. And uh, what did you guys think? I, I, I don't know. I'm, I can't break down quarterback tape like maybe Kyle can because he was a coach for so long. But like, I just felt weird to me that they were in like such a small space and couldn't run a lot of like deep stuff. Like, he was just throwing a lot of like, shorter to intermediate throws and it was more like clearly you could see he was doing extra sh stuff to show that he has range in his hips and everything so he looked good to me I, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary like and most people want to see like the deep throw and like the crazy herbert kind of you know draft the combine throw we didn't see any of that because they were playing in like this like tiny little this tiny little uh facility so it, I, I would be more than happy if he was my quarterback but kyle what do you think yeah, I don't know. Like, so all those things are, they're routine. So, like, he's been throwing with those guys and, like, they know their routine of this is the throw, this is the throw, this is the throw. So it, it's just hard. Like, it, to me, it, what really looked good was him being able to drop back, plant, and throw a ball. That's really all I, I wanted to see was how quick his feet looked. If it, like, it looked choppy or it looked like he was in pain at all, it looked really fluid, looked like the ball got out quick. Um, he made all the throws he needs to make. Yeah, they were in a little, but he was making 40, 50 yard throws, which good Lord, if you're making deeper balls than that, you're not going to have time to sit back there and make those deep balls. So mm -hmm. I thought he, he threw the balls that he needed to throw. And to me, as a, if I was a GM, I'd be like, okay, he looks healthy. Like it, I'm not worried about him being some like broken down old man that can't move. Like that's the best you're going to get until he's actually playing and gets hit once. Right. Once he starts getting hit, that's when you're really going to know, like how, right. what's a doctor really going to tell you? So I think he's proven what he needed to prove to get drafted in the first round. Um, and then only time will tell if he's actually healed and not going to get hurt again. 
Right. Is he just held together with, you know, bubble gum and a prayer or is right. he actually ready to make contact? I agree. Yeah. Time will tell. And whether or not he's even on our team, time will tell. Uh, but uh, speaking of our team, let's look at what's been going on in Charger News. Uh, one of the biggest announcements, I think, uh, was the possibility of Hard Knocks having not one, but two teams and two teams from L.A., the Rams and yours truly, the Chargers on Hard Knocks, double teaming it in SoFi Stadium. I don't Let's know about you guys. Go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay, here's the only thing I'll say that's negative. I'm sorry, Kevin, but there has to be something. Oh, I got a few negative things. Go negative ahead. Opinion. I got a few course, negatives. Go. Of course, there's two things. Of course, when the Chargers are finally going to get on Hard Knocks, we're they on have the same share page. It. You and Bullshit. I are on the same page, Kyle. I was and about to bring up all these things you're about to say. And secondly, we're going to get so excited about this and there's going to be no training camp and it's going to, the season's going to get canceled. Like that, those are like my two thoughts. Like, are you kidding me? We're finally <laughs> right. docketed to be on this. Yeah. And there's the potential for it to not happen. And right. we have to share it. Even if it does happen, like, come Absolutely. on, the just, Rams were on it like two years ago. I could just picture this in my head right now. Like I heard the news. I was like, yes, yes. Finally hard knocks. Thank God. But then I thought I was thinking about it. Like they're still going to have the same amount of episodes. So, we're going to have 50% or less than 50%. They're not going to split less, that bad yeah. boy down the middle. That's not how that works. They're going to go with wherever the stories are. I'm sure. worried that we're going to be on hard knocks and barely be on hard knocks. Yeah. Like, what a, what a jip in that yeah. essence. Like, why Seriously. the year that we want to watch the Chargers at training camp, we're going to get, right. you know, the shows are, what, 45 minutes? There's, like, five of them. I honestly feel like we're going to get less with this than we did with the backstage like backstage gave us a lot of a lot of material it's going to be produ produced slightly better by you know nfl and hbo but right we'll we'll see i, I it's definitely an interesting interesting thing i'm not going to complain about it because i'm super pumped that we're finally going to get on hard knocks but there's an element of like might not happen might not get a lot of time a lot of might right. nots so we'll see i'll take what i can get though any Charger news, I'll take. Just a lot of getting your hopes up, kind of like the Chargers always seem to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, of course. Why like, can you do this to the, the Giants and the Jets? Or, like, there's yeah. the other options. Throw Buffalo in there, too. Make it a three-way. <laughs> you know, like, why are you going to do, do all the, the teams. Every team gets their Jesus. own hard knocks this Hard knocks year. for everyone. Everyone gets five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it feels like. We yeah. just can't be in the spotlight. No Hosted matter by what. Tony Romo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. Uh, it, God, I mean, this whole, everything with COVID right now, it's really, you can debate when you think things will go back to normal, but the reality is I don't think things are going to go back to normal anytime soon. And I'm really worried that it is going to affect something that's going to happen all the way in September, you know, because there's, you're not, nobody's really going to feel safe to be in a public space without there being something like an antivirus or a vaccine. And that can take a year to a year and a half to actually create and mass produce and get out to the public. So my fingers are crossed that we're able to get there, but man, I don't know. I really don't. So We'll see. Maybe it'll be a year long hard knocks. I don't know. Can they do that? It's HBO. They can do what they want. I don't care. Yeah, do what they want. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I the, the even thinking about not having football next year, like I like there's an element of needing this for morale for the country. Like you gotta look sure. at it this way. If there's something you've yeah, had for, sure. for your entire life that happens at a certain time of the year and you don't have it, man, you're gonna put a lot of people into a sad place like you, they need Dude. to take that into consideration like do you play without fans maybe please for the love of god just play if that's the like the worst case scenario then do it yeah I, that's what i would do we still get to watch football you know um yeah. yeah like all this talk about like so like all right i don't know if this is like bad for me to say in my household it was that i like soccer too in addition to <laughs> it's not my number one sport but i like watching it you like sports you're fine so and what what number is it English Premier League is a soccer. <laughs> which num Kyle, that which number is it out of all your favorite sports? Which number is it, Kyle? It's probably three. Whoa. Okay, go ahead. Oh, that is high. Um, but 
So Bold. like they were they were talking about they were right at the end of the season, like the last quarter left when all this started happening. So they shut down and they were talking about starting back up with no fans. And everyone was bashing them for like, oh, you're not like you're not. This is just shows that you don't care about the fans, that you don't. All this is about money and like m- sufficing your your TV contracts. I'm like, are you kidding me? To do that would be the most like fan oriented thing in the world. I'm sitting They're at doing home right it now for with, us. They're, they would be right. doing it for us. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's like you're losing money by not having people in the stands, and you're. I I I need it. Like I want something to watch so badly to like have some like just some something to like be focused on outside and take me out of what's going on. Like. I feel like it's such a good morale thing for our country that if that's the worst case scenario, do it. Like it would suck to not be at the first game ever played at SoFi Stadium. I have that on my calendar to be there no matter what the cost. But it, if that's what it takes for me to be able to see Chargers week one, then just do it. Right. Or I got a better idea. Catch this. Every section, <laughs> only one person per section. Each ticket, a million dollars. So there's like all these sections with one person <laughs> sitting in it. And, and there, will, there will be people rich. there, but we're practicing <laughs> extra social distancing. You know, you feel me? Right. Can you imagine? It, can you imagine how fast it would stuff, be to get a beer? Yeah, dude. No, no. We drop. We bring in like uh, drones. We drop drones? beers down. Oh, drop hot dogs. Nachos might be a problem, but we're going to oh drop them God. down. <laughs> they're, they're coming. Yeah, yeah. That's, that'd be, wow. that's a great idea. If you think outside the box, anything's possible is what I'm saying. Let's not give okay. up. Let's not start stressing that football is not going to happen because no. that would just be too much to handle right now. But, you know, let's not forget, you know, the players that are actually on the field, not 100%, really yeah. able to practice social distancing. <laughs> and the fact that this right. is a serious time and we probably shouldn't be complaining that there might not be football. I totally right. get no, that. But if and that's just the still an issue by September, then no, don't play. Right. Yeah. But the if, selfishness issue, me, I want if, this, if the September issue is that you can't have 70,000 people in a stadium then okay, then don't sure. do that. Sure. Like if that's like that, if that's like the worst case is we just don't want to have 70,000 people together, mm-hmm. then okay, don't do that. And let's just have the games. But I guess that's if it's still possible a- where like, if you were able, I mean, if you could test every person that goes into those spaces and they all test negative. All right. I mean, because if you limit it to just the teams, not the, not but the, not the fans, hard, not the fans. But that's hard though. Just the teams. Cause like what happens if, yeah. You're, what happens if um, Tyrod tests, but no one else does, and he can't play? And you're like, well, that's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, it's kind of yeah. interesting. I think what's happening right now, like the UFC is still doing UFC stuff. But what the UFC has done is that the UFC and Dana White just bought an island. Yes. So they're, they're testing people <laughs> and taking them to an island they're, to fight. They can't come to our island unless they're clear. And then we'll Dude, come Dude, you remember fight. Enter, the, Enter the Dragon with Bruce Lee? That's exactly what that movie was. They took these people to that's an island to fight. Yep. <laughs> so I think it's like there's got to be somebody that's going to do it and do it safely and correctly so to not infect other people. And right. once they see like that people need this as badly as they do, it's going to start happening. And we're still a little ways out. It's like we still have months. So it's not the right. end of the world. Not the end of the world. We are not doctors, nor are we scientists. We are merely fans of football. So that is our disclaimer. Don't, don't, don't you flame us, folks. We're just, we need our football. Don't take it away from us. Uh, let's see. We've also picked up, we picked up another guy and this guy has got to have the best name on our team right now. Mr. Storm Norton, the highest graded <laughs> lineman, Storm and Norton, the highest graded lineman from the XFL, uh, plays offensive tackle. So that kind of, uh, pooches my mock draft. So sorry, Mr. Wirfs. Uh, he's dude. He, if you, Storm Norton is going to be deep bench if he even makes the team. There's, he's dude, there's yeah, no guarantee he's, this guy's on the, on the roster. The top graded lineman of the XFL. The That's got to mean something. <laughs> it means something right now because there's no other news. That's what it means. It means but, he wasn't playing for the NFL. Is what it means. Uh, excited. He looks like a you know big like yeah. Viking looking guy. So good yeah. for him. No, don't get me wrong. I'm excited to have him on the team. The fact that he played really well is a great sign. Right. But at the same time, he was cut from two NFL teams immediately prior to that Mm -hmm. so i I, i'm like i love having depth on the offensive line is what the chargers need yes no doubt about it yes and i hope he gets an opportunity to play yes but i i just doubt that he's going to be a a week one 
I really highly doubt that he's going to be a week we, one starter. Do we, uh, we, and we, if we have to have him start, we're in trouble. So that's, it's just, it's a nice, and that's not saying anything against guy. him. It's no, just, he's the bench guy for right now. Yeah. Like, right. he's depth, for which is you need, right? Yeah, we need depth, clearly. Need that, absolutely. And uh, also, Michael Davis uh, signed his second round tender. Uh, we'll make 3.3 million this season. So good to keep Michael Davis around as well. Finally, somebody that didn't jump ship. Yeah. Mr. Phillips. Look at you, Adrian. And hey, we've got uh, something we haven't done in a while. A fan focus from Mr. Scott M. who writes in, I was hoping you might share your thoughts on the rebrand. I am curious what you think of the smiley, in parentheses, face, and how you think it will be used in the future. Curious on your thoughts. And okay, love you. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> the fact that he had finished it with Kill Love You Bye makes me so happy. Yeah. That Kill is it. that is a catchphrase. You, Mr. Duggan, in your drunken stupor, have created the Charger <laughs> Chat catchphrase, K Love You Bye. I'm gonna get you guys some shirts, K Love You Bye shirts. Yes. Um, we gotta fund this podcast somehow. But yeah, no, this is a great fan focus because it it it's an interesting subject. It's an interesting topic. You know, the actual rebranding of the bolt which we are all wearing charger hats i love seeing that um the rebranding of the bolt was very simple softened the rounding evened it out not a big deal but when you look at the smiley face with the bolts for eyes it can it's a really fine line you know if you look at um things like movie remakes you know you look at godzilla and godzilla from 2000 if you look at Ben Hur and the most recent Ben Hur. All of these remakes, they could either be really good or they could just be terrible. And it almost feels a little bit like pandering to a millennial audience of, you know, here's a here's a charger smiley face for you guys to throw in your emoticons when you guys are texting each other. Whoa, right. 2020. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and so I I I don't know if that's the th- old man 36 year old in me that's yelling at kids to get off my lawn that doesn't like this smiley face or if it's just wasn't meant for me if it gets incorporated anywhere in like the uniforms like oh no (laughs) like that would be that's that's a disaster in my opinion no way no way that's like a rollerball uniform yeah you guys remember that movie rollerball exactly There's no, like, there's, I, I'm sorry. There's Another bad no remake, way by that the way. Be- <laughs> I, I was just yeah. about to say that. Very bad remake. There's no way that becomes part of our brand. Like, there's n- hands down, like, no way that's actually, the lightning bolt is the Chargers. I was honestly kind of hoping that with the new uh, logo, we'd go back to the horse. Um, and the, the like, logo. lightning bolt kind of shield logo. Yeah, that would have been sweet. Um, just if you're going to change something, then you would. But I, I don't hate the new bolt. I think it's still cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think there's any chance of that smiley face being a legitimate part of our, um, like, our culture going forward. I think it was just like a, kind of like you said, I'm like, it's a 2020. It's going to be something maybe used on our social media here and there, kind of like as a transition in between stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think it's going to be like on merchandise a lot or on in the um, end zone. Definitely not. No way. Charger no seats. Way. Not I'm trying to find stuff. where is that fine line? Like where can you put it? It's a digital, it's like a, it's like a, it's a transition thing for their, their digital like online department. Okay. Okay. Kevin, let's hear. You have so your I hands have up right now. Completely opposite. I want to hear what you have to say. My perspective is completely different than yours. Side of the helmet? I don't think it goes on the gear. I don't think you're going to wear it. My Jock thought strap? is as soon as I saw that image, the first thing I thought of was Fight Club. Second thing I thought of was Project <laughs> Mayhem. Honestly, this is what I thought Project Mayhem. Okay. So the idea that we're going to have the sticker. We go in somewhere, blow up their shit, and then throw a sticker on their <laughs> locker their room as we walk in the out. Locker room. Project <laughs> Mayhem, locker bro. Has a, has okay. Smashing that shit when we win. Just throw it up on something. That's okay. what I'd like nice. to see it used as. Yes. You know, I'll like, buy one of those stickers. Bam, no, I'm wearing that. No, if that's course, the intent. Yeah. We're going to smash that around all over because we're going to be killing people this year. <laughs> wow. So that's the other side of it. Oh, man. 
<laughs> Somebody get Kevin's this guy some football. With some <laughs> I am Robert Paulson, guys. I am Robert Paulson, and his so are you. His name was Robert Paulson. His right. name was Robert Paulson. All right, if these stickers don't get made by act the Chargers, we're going to make some. We're going to the game in Arrowhead, and we're handing them out to every Charger fan, and we better see that just littered at Arrowhead Stadium. Oh, just pack it. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> oh, just... Oh man, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. So many fights would happen. It's our fight club, nice. dude. It's our fight club sticker. I love it. I'm on board, fully on board for it. Don't think it's going to be on yeah. a helmet. Don't think it's on a, It's like a fun socks. little. And not, Hell another, yeah, I'd buy those socks. I'd be no, wearing I'm those. Saying, would I'd it be on, on the Charger socks? Sock on the Charger socks. Hands. No, just Rick Fan socks. Another, another little logo that I saw, I was watching um, somebody Clipboards? review it. Is they did um, in that same video, that uh, kind of hype video for the New Jerseys and stuff. Um, they did like the, you know, the triangle warning sign, like for electric, oh, yeah. something's mm-hmm. electrical. Yeah. That was kind of cool bolt. too. Yeah. That was kind of cool too. Like, I don't mind incorporating those kinds of things here and there, you know, like it's not going to be on gear. It's not going to be on jerseys or helmets. I think it's kind of cool if you see it here and there. What do you guys think about seeing it around the stadium? Like if they, you know, when you go into Qualcomm and you would see like banners up of right. random stuff. Like, That's what I'm saying. You, I'm would like- you? It, it, would it try to find where to it see feels that comfortable yeah. to have that, you know, cause it's not, I don't think it's just going to be on social media. I mean, it might make its way to the jumbotron. I maybe you'll see some yeah. flags hanging around like those kind of like banner flags that kind of hang down. Like, if, I don't know. Okay. So let's say this is a lot okay, of apparel. So all of us I think ag- it's going to be a lot of apparel all, stuff. Yeah. So all of us agree. It's not going to end up on the gear. It's not going to end up on jerseys on like sideline helmets. <laughs> I mean, I don't gear. know that it's not going to, man. That's the thing. Like, Really, I, I kind of hope it doesn't, but I don't know. I don't know if what's going to happen. Know. It might get projected yeah. on the top of SoFi Stadium whenever we're playing, and the freaking Goodyear blimps flying overhead, seeing a big old smiley face on the top. I don't know. I would have a problem with that. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was going to. I was trying to build the worst case, and then was going to say like, well, not the worst case, just like the most extreme case. Like right. If it's if it's everywhere except on the field, would you be upset if you see smileys like lightning bolt faces and warning signs with lightning bolts on it i would i don't know that i would necessarily right be... now jesus <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't say Says the guy with zero tattoos i'm ready like... i finally got my, my, my tattoos <laughs> oh, ready man. let's go the guy grows a beard and he wants a tattoo yeah my oh, life man. is amazing those, what happens COVID COVID is for me, guys. <laughs> lots happened in my life i think he needs a troll tattoo i don't know i i think no it's... that movie was not good enough to be on my body <laughs> i i I think if I see it, I wouldn't necessarily be upset. I would just be disappointed because it would just be like, man, am I this old that like, I can't see the fun in this smiley face. Like I, I, yeah. it would be like that episode of South park where, you know, uh, Stan everywhere he looks, he just sees shit. Is that like me? Am I at that stage <laughs> in my life right now where I look at a smiley face and I just go, that's shit. And <laughs> you know what I mean? like, is that where I'm at right now? I don't know. I, I wouldn't necessarily be upset. I would just be, be depressed that I can't find the fun in a damn smiley face. Yeah. Yeah, that's the funny I, part, though, is like you're pissed off at a smiling face. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so I don't, the other thing, and we'll move on from this. That's fine. Um, but the, I feel like, I don't know what it, I don't get me wrong. The powder blues are the best thing that's ever happened in to me. sports. In sports. <laughs> <laughs> the powder blue jerseys are the best thing that's ever happened. I just think that it, I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like when you look at certain teams and I, I love the chargers. We started a podcast about the chargers. Whoa. There's just something about disclaimer. our, <laughs> yeah, that's a big yeah, old disclaimer. <laughs> just I'm, smack I'm, down. Every time I'm scared that Kevin's going to overreact, I have to put a good disclaimer <laughs> on or else I'm not going to be able to talk to my brother anymore. Disclaim but, away. There's something about like our look and our jerseys that already kind of has that feel that's like a little bit more. I don't know if it's like softer or like more towards that, like not like hard nose roots where the Packers, we dress like this, where the Raiders, we have these boring uniforms with two colors and we never change them. Like we've always been, it seems like on like, you're the chargers and your mascot's a lightning bolt. Like that seems always to be a little bit more on the front end as opposed to being like an animal or a raider or, you know what I mean? Like it kind of fits our MO a little bit. I might be lost in the thought. I'm trying to follow um, the, the train of thought. So I, what I'm saying is I think that the chargers look is 
a little bit less traditional football, like a little bit less old school. Okay. Like okay. we have get, these colors and we don't go outside it. of it. And it's just so like you're calling a classic soft. historical. You're calling us well, soft. Just not like, well, no, it's not we don't soft, like have a just historical, not traditional. Like, just traditional. Yeah, like, got it. When you think of like the old school football teams, you think of what the Packers. Um, who else? Throw me some names. Come on, guys. I mean, the, the Steelers. The Raiders, you can look at Steelers, Cowboys. The Cowboys, Cowboys, America's team. You don't think? I mean, and even though the Chargers are, we've been around for forever. You just don't think of like the the Chargers. I don't know. It just seems like our branding has always been a little bit less traditional. Maybe I'm way off. Yeah, I, I think I get what you're saying. It's not it, our. I mean, our color scheme isn't traditional. Our, uh, like our mascot is not traditional. You can't go, you can't be like, oh, I'm going to go to this Halloween party dressed as a charger. So what does that mean? Like, are you coming dressed as a lightning bolt? You could come dressed as a cowboy. You can come dressed as a buccaneer. You can come dressed as a mother loving Seahawk, but you can't really come dressed as a charger. And uh, yeah, no, I, I get that. It, you can't cling to I just something. Feel like it, lends, it lends some freedoms to be like we can we do a smiley bolt stuff. with yeah. lightning bolts that would be interesting if that was our mascot if a guy came out dressed as a big smiley face <laughs> with hands sticking out maybe of the side. just an emoji sick. Oh i love God. that i would i don't know just a round <laughs> hockey <laughs> puck I'm just walking around and running into people that'd be awesome I don't know. Uh, we'll see, folks. Hopefully, right, I didn't just wish that on. into existence. But yeah. <laughs> thank you for that question, Scott. You yes, <laughs> thank you, you ignited Scott. it. You spurred a lot of conversation. Minute conversation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, last week y'all heard my Can't mock you draft. Bye. Caleb, you bye. Y'all heard my bye, mock Scott. draft, and uh, I loved it. But I don't think anybody else did. So let's go to two guys who you know play football and coach football and you know, can analyze football, at least to some degree. And we're going to look at the mock drafts from the coach in Huggin and see what they picked. We'll kind of, you know, we'll, we'll go through this as if we were in an actual draft. So I'm going to, I'm going to find a coin. I'm going to flip a coin and we'll see who gets to go first. I've got a quarter here from the great year of 95 when there was no COVID. <laughs> Huggin. <laughs> With no, your, actually, uh, can I can I defer to the ladies first? Kyle, ooh. you can call it. All right. Heads or tails? Tails sir. never fails. Tails never fails. Tails never fails. Yeah. All right. That's Mel V. Ingram. And it is heads. Oh, I go first. First choice. Tails before beauty. Round one yeah. from Mr. Huggins. All right. So mine's pretty, I've been talking about it a lot. I absolutely think we're going to get to a... I don't think we're going to have to trade up for him. I think he's going to come to us. That's what um, she said. A lot of people have been talking about um, his injury concerns and everyone's gun share right now because they're not being able to see him. They're not being able to, like, you know, get their own doctors to look at him, you know. Um, even I read an article, two teams said that they um, have already, you know, disqualified him um, in terms of health, in terms mm -hmm. of that. So um, I think he's going to fall to us. I think we're going to get him at six, and I think – it's going to improve our quarterback situation greatly. I don't think he's going to play too soon because he's still got some healing to do, but I think he's going to be a huge get at six. When everybody last year was talking about tank for Tua, that was everything. Tank for Tua, tank for Tua. It's funny yeah. how people just kind of get forgotten if, if, you know, if, they had, if they're not in the limelight for a couple months. You know, It's kind of funny. People forget. So uh, Tua, Tua at six is uh, what I'm going with. Kyle, what do you have? Okay, so... I have somebody, I rewatched his combine tape. I rewatched a lot of stuff, listening to a lot of podcasts about what people are saying, mock drafts. Um, some guys actually picked this guy over Kevin's pick. Um, I'm going to go with Justin Herbert at Ugh, number six overall. No. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Get me all upset. Get me mad. I almost no. like it. What are you doing? Uh, oh, oh, that's nice. Damn. Justin, if you're listening, it's nothing personal. No. Uh, it's entirely no, personal. I don't. I don't have Justin Herbert going to us at number six. In my opinion, you're such that guy's a, a second. You're such a dick. In my opinion, sorry, he's a second round pick. Up. My blood's pumping right now, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. I knew I, I just, I know you too well. I knew I would get you good with that one. Um, I also, this isn't part of my draft. I just want to bring it up. Yeah. Everyone keeps throwing Jordan Love around to us at six, and you need to knock it off. Stop. <laughs> you all collectively stop. need to just stop it. Stop. Just stop putting that in people's ears. I just like 
it scares me every time I see it and like get worried that I'm having some weird premonition that that's what's going to happen. Just stop. Herbert <laughs> is and Jordan Love are the guys that are going to fall in the draft. The Patriots are going to pick them and they're going to be awesome, but that's fine. But that's they're fine. not going sixth overall. Okay. <laughs> Let it go. So my opinion, yes, I'm going to give an alt an an A and a B because my first pick is if Tua does fall to us, you have to draft him. That's my opinion. Right. If Tua is there at six, you, you have to take him. him. Yeah, you have to. Do I think he'll get to us? No. I think the Dolphins are going to take him. So I think in order for us to get him, we have to trade up. And I don't think that we're going to trade up. No. Um, it's just not really in our style. I don't see us giving up all that that tr- draft stock to get him. If we do, honestly, if we give up a second round pick, our, we give up our number six and a second round pick in a 2021 second round pick to get to a, I, I would be like, ah, that Paid hurts a little too much, but I wouldn't be pissed. I would be like, okay, we are sold on this guy. Let's go. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I still wouldn't expect him to play this year, right. but in my opinion, how many times do you get the number six pick? Hopefully not a lot. Hopefully the charges is a once every four four or five years type of thing we just had our quarterback for forever move teams now's the time to take advantage of our number six pick because if you're a number 20 pick trying to get up to the number four pick you're giving up a lot more than a second this year and a second next year yeah so if it happens i wouldn't be extremely upset but it would kind of hurt like oh that's a lot to give up right um so my if if tua goes before us I am still sold on Jedrick Wills. I think he's the best tackle in the in the draft, and I think he's an absolute stud. And for us to be in a position to pick the best tackle available, um, it doesn't come across very often, mm-hmm. even at number six. Usually they're in the top five. So yeah. at number six to get to pick the best tackle in the country, yeah. um, whether it's Jedrick Wills or Wirfs, like Wooly said last week, in either one of those guys, I would be hyped and I would be so excited. Um, but I, if two was there, you have to take him. Mm-hmm. If he's not there, we draft up. I wouldn't be pissed. But also, I think Jedrick Wills at Alabama at number six is would be an awesome quality pick. I it's, agree. It, really, it's hard. It's hard to bone the number six pick in the draft. You're going to get somebody really good, right? Uh, and to kind of touch on both of your drafts, uh, Tua, you know, hearing nothing but great things. But you know, Kevin, does it not scare you that some of those teams have written off his health? That doesn't worry you at all? No. Well, people have written off people for smoking out of a gas mask. Like, uh, people write off people all the time for stupid shit. Like, they haven't even been able to see him in person. So if you're just going to write him off, that's probably maybe team 28 and 29 picking. So it doesn't matter what they're thinking. Right. Okay. So, They've written him off because they have no chance of getting there unless they, <laughs> they give up everything for the next yeah, three drafts. Right. Well, and the thing is also, like, people are really concerned about his injury history. And that's a good point. Like, he's hurt a lot. You know? Right. People are saying he's fragile. which. Right. It, he very co- well could be, man. We're coming from one of the most reliable quarterbacks right. ever in right. the National Football League to somebody that gets hurt every year. That's a different mindset. So right. I, it's hard, man. It's hard to say. It's a crapshoot. Right. I think he has the talents to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Right. Um, can he stay healthy? You need an offensive line. You need all these things. So I don't know. Right. We'll see. But I think Tua is going to fall to us, and I think that's where, where we're going to go round one. Okay. And then with Jedrick, um, Jedrick was one that I was kind of tossing around in my head as well for the first round pick. Uh, the reason why I, I went to Wirfs, and I made this decision because I don't know enough about playing football, but Wirfs was at least touted as being able to play both sides. Left. Jedrick yeah. was the one that wasn't necessarily listed as being able to right. do that. Now, that doesn't mean that he can't, but talking to a coach how easy is it to make that switch because i'm pretty i mean we're paying balaga okay balaga's on the right side jedrick is normally playing on the right side how easy is it to switch over to the left side like does that is there a big learning curve for that or is that an easy fix yeah so he did so yeah that's that was also went into my thinking too was this when i did that tackle recap Mm -hmm. was before jedrick was ever uh, or before Brian Balaga was signed by us. Mm-hmm. Um, so here was my only thought. And I just wanted to give some difference because Worfs, I think, like I said, if he goes to us at six, great pick. Mm-hmm. He could be our left tackle. Mm-hmm. Everything else would take a little bit more working around, but I don't know. I don't know if this is like 
me thinking too much and overthinking it. Balaga played left tackle in college. He didn't play right. He didn't. I was listening to a podcast today by the Chargers Podcast Network mm-hmm. that he never he he said that I had never gotten in a right tackle stance until my first start week four of my rookie season. Wow. He yeah, was a left NFL. tackle at Iowa. He had never played right tackle until his first start. So he got in a stance and he's been a right tackle for the last, I don't know how many years. Ten. So it, so you have flexibility where whether Jedrick can learn the left tackle or you toss Balaga back over there. I, maybe Belaga's too set in what he does now as a veteran, and that's just where he's comfortable. But I just think I don't know. Like I, I Jedrick would be great. I think, um, or Worfs would be great. I just think that tackle is the position you go to if quarterback's not there for our team. That's the sure. biggest need. Sure. But that was kind of my thinking because I I agree. I was like Jedrick. I don't know. Like we brought in Belaga. Jedrick's a true right tackle. Right. I just, when I did my research on him, I might be a little biased now. He, the guy's just a stud, sure. so maybe he's not the guy. Okay. So those keeping score at home, Kevin's got Tua, Kyle's got Jedrick, and I've got Christian. Christian. So uh, I've not been able to come up with a better bet other than getting these two guys to sing I'm a Little Teapot with their boys. So if you have a better idea, Scott M., please. Since you're the come only on, one who, who talks to you. us, uh, <laughs> yeah. come up with something better than I'm a and little Scott teapot. M, he found, he hit us up on Facebook. He just messed, he messaged us on Facebook. If you go find us, Charger Chat Podcast, we saw it right away. And that's why we were able to get him on here. So that's awesome. Yes. Thanks, Scott. Thank you, Scott. All right. Going to round two. Kyle. Go ahead. Go ahead. Snake what do you boy. got? Here's my thought. Um, we have two big boys that are coming up on free agency, very similar to what, um, Wooly brought up last week, Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa are both due for big paydays next year. Are we going to be able to pay both? It's going to be really tough to make that happen. Sure. So we need to draft somebody this year that can have a year to learn from both of them and become the stud. Um, as I looked kind of at where things might fall, it was actually a guy that we looked at. Um, in one of our edge rusher uh, analysis, and it was Kevin's Terrell Lewis out of Alabama. Um, he's the edge rusher. I just think that he hasn't had a fair shot. It's hard. Like he got hurt, um, and then at Alabama, you only get so many snaps because of how many people are great to play there. I think he could be a steal in the second round, kind of like a Uchina Nuosu type of a guy. Mm. Comes from a big program, has obviously extreme talent and get him in there for a year to learn from those guys. I think he could be an incredible player. Um, so that's who I am kind of seeing falling to us, maybe at a number two spot. If we're able to get that QB in the first is the Terrell Lewis. If we don't get a QB in the first tackle is going to get taken somewhere. But if we get, um, I think Terrell Lewis at, at Alabama could be a, a solid pick in the second round for us. Excellent. Kev. Huggin. So I'm sticking with, you know, having to, uh, we still need tackle help. And I, it's one of, one of the players Kyle's talk, Kyle talked about um, when we were breaking down um, offensive tackles. Um, with round two, I'm going with Prince Tega Winogo, the, the tackle from Auburn. He's the, the, uh, the kid that's mm. only, only been playing for five years. Um, he played one year in high school, uh, four years yeah. in college. Um, he's athletic out of his mind. Um, you know, he's just... The upside is so insane with this guy, um, and the what from what it sounds like, Coach Campin is just really good at making people better. Um, from what everyone said, so I think this is a guy that you could target. Um, and everyone's talking about needing a left tackle right right now. Like I get that mindset, but I also think needing a tackle halfway through the season, near the end of the season, something like that, somebody like this that you can get up to speed and ready to go and playing at a really high level. I think is a really great option. Um, and, you know, he's only played for five years. So he's, I, when I, my fifth year of playing football, I was 12. Dude, 12? I was 12 years old on my fifth year of football. Like, I, <laughs> it's not even fun. To, it's funny to think about that he's only played for five years. Mm-hmm. Like, that's just yeah. crazy to me. So, um, I'm What's going funny with, to me is he's played five years and you want to draft him in the second round. Yeah, because I think he's that talented of a player. He played at Auburn. I'm kidding. He's, I'm he's kidding. Such a piece yeah, of I'm kidding. <laughs> That's who I'm taking, and I think it's probably way closer than your uh, your your edge rusher. I think it's. I think if pick. we take a tack, 
I want the edge rusher if we take a tackle in the first round. Sure. Okay. Wait till my third pick, and then I'll let you know kind of the if so facto this falls here or there. So, All right, Turd Burger. Just out of curiosity, Kyle. Uh, yes. Just because of you've you've mentioned such a uh, telling everybody to knock it off. If we don't draft a QB in the first, and Jordan Love falls to us in the second, what would you think about that? That's fine. Okay. I think a Jordan Love project in the second round is fine. I don't think he'll get there. I, he's the number four ranked quarterback right now, so I think he'll get swooped somewhere in the first round. Okay. Uh, but if he falls to us at at the sixth pick of the second round, I think that's a steal. Okay. But from what people are saying that we're going to take him number six overall right. right now. Stop it with the six, yeah. but we're open stop. to... Stop. Thir- stop. We're open to 38. 38. We're open to 38. 38. We're okay. Six, stop. All right. Yeah. Okay. Going on to round three. Mr. Huggin, the floor is yours. So I'm going with a guy that it's tougher when you get into these rounds because then it's just kind of guessing and looking at other people's mocks and that kind of thing. You don't know who's going to fall where. Exactly. Yeah. So th- these are just guesses. And this guess is based on the fact that he's um, already met with the Chargers twice. Mm. Um, I think that's a little telling. A clue. Um, he's a linebacker. And his name is Lo- Logan Wilson out of Wyoming. Um, I'm going with him because I think he fits the defense that we're doing right now. He's a was a DB, got bigger, playing linebacker, uh, very quick, very good in coverage. Um, the last three years, he's had over 100 tackles each year, um, which is crazy. It's just the volume's insane. Um, I think he'd be a, a really good upgrade and you know, to some of the guys that are sitting behind people. So I think, you know, him and Tranquil and, and those guys working kind of those drop back linebackers that can drop into coverage, I think he'd be a really nice pickup for us. And it also goes to say just that he, they've already met with him twice. I think that I think that has something to do with it. So uh, so my third round, Logan Wilson, linebacker out of Wyoming. All right. Okay, so mine is another if we draft here, then we draft there. Like you said, it gets hard in the third. So if we draft tackle first, edge rusher second, Here would my ideal situation for the third round would be Jalen Hurts out of Oklahoma. So I think he's going to be, I really truly believe he could be the next Russell Wilson type of quarterback. Hmm. Completely underrated, but he's an absolute leader, character guy that shows up and puts in the work to become great. He's the the fundamental guy that has an upside of like great potential. If you watch this guy play, um, the guy just, He's a grinder. I mean, I don't know how many people watched the national championship actually when Tua got his start because Jalen wasn't playing great. So they pulled Jalen and put Tua in second half of the national championship. Tua goes off, wins the game. And Jalen's the first one there congratulating him on. He's doing interviews talking about how much he loves the team, how much he's like supporting Tua, how great everything was. That that's the kind of guy this this guy is. If I was benched and then somebody else went on to win the national championship after I had just played 14 games to get there, I'd have been in the locker room so fast. This guy just to me seems like the ultimate leader, team player type of guy. He's like he's and he's competitive. You listen to some of his post game um, press conferences after last year at Oklahoma. The guy just has that fire that we had with Phil, that leadership fire intangible mm. that I don't know that all these other guys have. So if we could get a Jalen Hurts project type in the third round, let him sit, and he's very similar style quarterback to a Tyrod. Let him learn from Tyrod for a whole year. I think give him an opportunity. I think he could become a great quarterback in the NFL. Now, he's not a first-round talent. He's not a second-round talent. But if we can get him in the third, if we draft two in the first, I am very similar to Kevin. I like the linebacker route mostly because we've already let go of several of them this offseason and our special teams are going to be de- absolutely depleted. Right. So Mike, the guy that I really like because of his versatility and the way that the NFL is going is Troy Dye out of uh, Oregon. We also did a spotlight on him. Mm-hmm. Um, he's an absolute playmaker. If there's a ball on the ground, he's going to be the guy to recover it. He just gets to the right places, uh, extremely versatile, not a traditional linebacker, uh, but that's not really what our team does. When we beat the Ravens, in the playoffs two years ago, it's because we had one linebacker and we had six defensive backs. Right. So like he 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 fits that kind of very uh, fluent, not traditional type of linebacker style. Um, so I think it's Jay, if we can get Jalen in the third, if we didn't draft one in the first, let's do it. 
If not, I love Troy Dye out of Oregon if he's still there too. Excellent. So th- what I don't like about what you said about Jalen is what how you described him, and I don't want to sound like a dick at all, but how you yeah. described him sounds like a cheerleader. We don't need a f- cheerleader. We don't need a guy who's Whoa. like, oh, you did so great winning that game. Blah, blah, blah. You did so great. Like, those are good attributes. But I want a guy that can get into a game and win shit. You know what I mean? I don't want the guy that is good at giving hype up speeches, but can't throw the winning touchdown. Like, that's not what I'm about right now. So it all, with all due respect, I don't want Jalen Hurts anywhere near our team. <laughs> what? Anywhere near it's, our team. It's not as if he's never won a right. game. It's not like just the not as I just don't, ever had. Had. I just don't <laughs> like that idea. I don't he was think a quarterback we need a, at Alabama that took them to a national championship, went to Oklahoma, took them to the final four. The guy's a winner. But above that, he also has the only, intangibles of being able to lead a team, kind of like Philip Rivers, who everyone's knock on Phil is what? He never won a Super Bowl. That could be your that could be your knock on Jalen Hurts. Other than that, the guy's a competitor and a leader. That's well, I don't our, wanna, that was I, our favorite at, that was our favorite attribute. I don't want I don't want the knock on him that he can't win a Super Bowl. I want a quarterback that can win a Super Bowl. Right. Round four. I like it. Let's go. I think I think it's mushroom. A good one. Stamp. Sorry, no, I just had to say it because I just really don't like. Enjoy your linebacker out of Wyoming. <laughs> I will. Third round I will. Jaylen I just Hurts. don't. I just don't like the Jalen Hurts pick. I just don't third like third round. If you can get the guy right. over but Wyoming I would rather linebacker, pick, I would rather trade up at the end of the first round to take Love than I would to wait to the third and pick this guy. <laughs> it might. Whatever. Agree to disagree. Only time will tell. Time um, agree to disagree. They don't all suck. No, yeah, they, they don't all you suck. suck. <laughs> all right, you're they up. Love you. Bye. Four you're up. Round. Sucky pick. Duggan, go ahead. Round four. Right. Round four. Round Coming four. In hot. I'm addressing another need of the team. Um, we obviously have two stud receivers. As we kind of discussed in the last podcast, we have a whole litany of other receivers that we don't know who they are. <laughs> um, so I think this being an extremely deep draft at the wide receiver position, I think we can get a stud in the fourth round. This guy's projecting to go fourth. His name is Devin Duvernay out of Texas. Uh, he's a true slot receiver. He's 5'10", 200 pounds. Um, he's the kind of guy that catches the ball in a bubble and just breaks tackle after tackle and scores. Um, he was a top five receiver out of high school. So he's, he's just an ex- extreme talent. Um, as a senior this year at Texas, he had 105 receptions for 1,386 yards and nine touchdowns. So the guy put up, put up the numbers that needed to be put up in the combine, which you all know how I feel the combine. And that's how I, I started the Justin Herbert kind of analysis with talking about his combine, hoping you'd pick up on it, <laughs> but you clearly did it. Um, at the combine, he did run a 4.39, which is extremely fast. So the guy's got that breakaway speed that you want out of a slot guy to kind of take thing, take the take the top off the coverage. Um, but I do think that because this is a deep draft, we're going to be able to get a stud here in the fourth round that is going to be a contributor this year. So I think Devin Duvernay out of Texas is going to be what I, that'd be a great pick for us in the fourth round. Excellent. I'm not mad, I'm not mad at that one. I think that's that would be a good pick if he <laughs> fell. Um, I will agree with you on that. I, I just Jalen Hurts. He's so, so mad about nothing. Um, just wait. Just wait <laughs> until the Patriots pick Jalen Hurts in the third round, right. and he wins fourteen Super Bowls. Right. Just Shut up. wait. <laughs> just wait. I don't want that either. Shut up. He's not going to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. Gone. My fourth round pick. I'm gonna um, smack you in the mouth. <laughs> I'm gonna smack you in the mouth. So I'm addressing the offensive side of the ball again. There is a player that's available in the fourth round. From what I've seen, looked at a lot of mock drafts, a lot of people where they're putting people. This guy would be such a huge uh, uh, addition to this group. And his name is A.J. Dillon, running back out of Boston College. He's a six foot, two, almost 250 pound, just <laughs> Nate Tron Bowling mean ball. style <laughs> yeah. power back. And he ran a four, five, three. So he's fast. But he's just mm. powerful. There was a um, video that went, went put up where you got to find it. He he stiffs arm three guys, almost gets tackled, breaks through a group, and then turns on the speed and, and scores a touchdown. He would be a huge compliment to Jackson and Eckler. Mm-hmm. He'd be a, go- a guy that would get on the goal line and would get you in the end zone. Like mm-hmm. He's not going to have to jump over shit. He's going to be able to run through people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... I think he'd be huge. And I, I was looking up stats on him and stuff. The only, only injury he's ever had, he had a sprained ankle in 2018. So he's not hurt. And he basically mm. carried... We're not Bo- going to draft him. He, we basically carried Boston College on his back when the quarterback went down <laughs> last year. 
So that's why he didn't we have like. Him. Just shut the. <laughs> he doesn't have a medical. He doesn't have an injury report. <laughs> We're not, not coming to the draft. Yeah. yeah. I just, I think he would be like a perfect addition to round out what we're capable at the running back position. So, yep. God, if he's there fourth round when we, when we're picking, like, I'm just, I'm going to be screaming into my computer. So I'm, dude, we'll we'll weird. See. I like that pick. Nice, Kevin. Fourth round. You finally had a good one. Mm, thanks, Kyle. Oh, That's yeah. solid. I like, uh, dude, to think about, because, in all honesty, to think about our Chargers of next year, we're going to be a running team. You have Tyrod mm-hmm. Taylor at Q, you got to be able to run the ball. Right. And a very effectively. So right. to put a fourth round pick into a guy like that, that gives you a change of pace and adds a whole nother element to your offense. And really is bit, even thinking about the play you described is a lot like Melvin Gordon, but just a lot cheaper. It That's a good, that'd be a great pick. If you get that a fourth round. He, and he had 16, almost 1700 yards and 14 touchdowns last year. Like he's putting up yeah. numbers. He's not just like a put his head down and run through and get two yards. Like he's, he's right. like, powerful natron means type guy and uh it'd be great to have a power back like that to go with our our fast and just insanely good you know quicker guys Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely we've only got two running backs coming into this so it would be nice to see us pick up at least one more you know not everybody is a cinderella story undrafted free agent like austin eckler was not to say that there won't be one there but it would be nice to see us get one who's at least proven to have that ability so Time will tell, folks. Uh, we've got, uh, let's see, less than two weeks now. Yeah, less than two weeks before the draft comes around the corner. So we'll find out which one of us was the most accurate. And I don't know, man. I think, Kev, I think I you, will just say, I think you used up all your juice on that uh, Chicago game last year. I don't th- I think what? your premonitions That's what yeah. I was going to bring up. I think I'm set for another one of those. I'm no. a proven. Guys ability to call craziness what if we get none of the picks right now? <laughs> that's like a great chance uh, that we get chance. zero we're oh for eight oh for 12 if we don't if none of us get our pick we all have to shave our beards no no <laughs> no easy for me to say mine's only four yeah, weeks for old real. But- <laughs> yeah, okay mr patchy four week old beard. Oh, below the all belt right. all right also, well, I'll send you all glitter bombs and you have to open them up on video and you have to deal with the consequences. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Three mock drafts in the books. We'll see who's right if any of us get any picks, right? I'm really hoping for my BSU guy, Mr. Weaver. Come on, buddy. Make it happen. Uh, I think with the draft just being a couple weeks away, uh, we will be doing an instant reaction for you guys the night of the first round just to because we're hype like you know we're clinging on to everything man so we're going to do an instant recap of round one and then we'll do a a, a total recap for the entirety of the draft uh, we'll try to get that out as soon as the draft is done so that gives you a little something to look forward to folks until then don't forget to bolt up because we're ready for any squad any place okay love you bye okay love you bye, okay, love you, bye. And now, a word from our sponsors. Why, Ralph, what's happened to you? What's that? You broke a bone playing some sweet, sweet football. Ouch, that's kind of smart. Looks like you might need some x-rays, my friend. And where better to go than to Trey Turner's Trey's X-Ray. Trey's X-Ray is the place to go when you have snapped a bone and need some high-quality images of your bony maronis. The best part of Trey's x-rays, free pancakes with every x-ray. Ain't that something? Don't trust some quack with some fancy degree. Come on down to Trey Turner's Trey's x-ray and get some pancakes today.